484 feet, or 147 meters high. The Great Pyramid of Giza has stood as a timeless testament to human ingenuity for over 4,000 years. Its massive limestone structure dominates the horizon, silently guarding secrets from a bygone era. Ah! But have you ever stopped to wonder about the sheer volume of stones that make up this ancient marvel? How many stones are there in the Great Pyramid of Giza? Let's dive deep into this intriguing question. Join us as we explore the inner workings of one of the world's o's most iconic structures and unveil the incredible effort that went into creating it. Welcome to our channel where history comes to life. It, in today's episode. We will be discussing the mind-boggling number of stones used to construct the Great Pyramid of Giza. But before we delve into this incredible topic, let's take a moment to introduce ourselves. We are passionate about history, and our goal is to bring the fascinating stories of the past to life for our viewers. If you share our passion, we invite you to hit that subscribe button so that you can join us on our journey through time. Now let's embark on an unforgettable adventure to discover the secrets of the Great Pyramid. Let's start with a brief overview of the Great Pyramid itself, built as a tomb for the Pharaoh Khufu around 2560 BC. It was the largest of the three pyramids constructed at the Giza Plateau. During the fourth dynasty of Egypt, Sold Kingdom period, during its construction, the pyramid stood at over 481 feet tall, making it the tallest man-made structure in the world for nearly 3,800 years until the Lincoln Cathedral was completed in 1311 AD today. Only 58 of the original 90 outer limestone casing stones remain, giving us a glimpse into the grandeur that once was. Now let's get to the heart of the matter. How exactly did the ancient Egyptians manage to construct such a monumental structure? What made them so successful when other ancient civilizations like the Mesopotamians failed in their attempts at large-scale pyramid building. The secret lay in their engineering prowess. According to historians, about 40,000 workers were employed in the construction of the Great Pyramid, working in shifts to keep the project going day and night. These workers were not slaves as commonly portrayed, but rather skilled laborers who took pride in their work. They used copper chisels, wooden hammers, and stone knives to shape the massive stones that formed the pyramid structure. These tools might seem primitive compared to modern standards, but they were incredibly advanced for the time. The stones themselves were primarily limestone and granite quarried from nearby sites. Limestone was the dominant material, forming the majority of the pyramid's structure with its relatively soft nature, allowing for easier carving. Granite, known for its durability, was used in areas requiring greater strength, such as the king's chamber and the base of the pyramid. These stones varied in weight from 2 to 70 tons, with some weighing up to 80 tons. Imagine the incredible effort required to quarry, transport, and lift these massive blocks. It truly boggles the mind. The precision with which the pyramid was aligned also speaks volumes about the advanced astronomical knowledge possessed by the ancient Egyptians. It is believed that the pyramid was aligned with true north within a margin of error of only three arc minutes, a level of accuracy that would not be achieved again for centuries. This astonishing feat of engineering and mathematics showcases their deep understanding of the cosmos. But perhaps the most awe-inspiring aspect of the pyramid is the method by which the massive stones were transported and lifted into place. Researchers have put forward several theories to explain this remarkable feat, each more fascinating than the last. One of the leading theories suggests that the stones were transported on wooden sledges lubricated with animal fat, allowing them to slide over a network of canals and roads leading to the construction site. Another theory proposes that the stones were moved using a combination of levers, rollers, and manpower, a testament to the sheer strength and determination of the ancient workforce. Once the stones were in place, they were precisely cut and fitted together with incredible accuracy. The exterior surface of the pyramid was originally covered with white limestone blocks that gave it a dazzling appearance, reflecting the sunlight from miles away. As we venture further into the pyramid, we encounter its inner chambers, each with its own unique significance. The Grand Gallery, a long, narrow passageway, leads to the King's Chamber, where the sarcophagus of Pharaoh Khufu is believed to have been placed. However, the chamber is surprisingly small. Only 10 feet by 15 feet which contradicts the pharaoh's status as the ruler of a vast empire. Nevertheless, researchers believe that the chamber's modest size may symbolize the pharaoh's belief in the afterlife, 
suggesting that earthly grandeur had no place in the next realm. Descending below the king's chamber is the queen's chamber, another significant area of the pyramid. Unlike the king's chamber, the queen's chamber is accessible and has several air shafts connecting it to the outside world. Its purpose remains a mystery, leading researchers to speculate that it may have served as a burial chamber for Khufu's wife or mother, or possibly even a mortuary temple. Some researchers have even suggested that the queen's chamber could be a gateway to the underworld, aligning with the ancient Egyptians' fascination with the afterlife and their elaborate beliefs surrounding it. One intriguing theory proposes that the entire pyramid acted as a giant sundial. With the shadow of the middle layer of masonry outlining the hours of the day on the ground below, this interpretation aligns with the ancient Egyptians' deep connection to the sun and their belief that it played a pivotal role in the afterlife. Another fascinating aspect of the Great Pyramid is its alignment with the cardinal directions. The precision of its orientation shows the ancient Egyptians' advanced astronomical knowledge and their ability to observe and understand the movements of celestial bodies. This knowledge was not only used for navigation, but also played a significant role in their religious beliefs. Despite its grandeur, the Great Pyramid was not the only structure at the Giza Plateau. It was initially part of a complex that included two more pyramids, the Pyramid of Kafir and the Pyramid of Menkaur, as well as several smaller structures in a sprawling city. Together, they formed a vast necropolis, dedicated to the worship of the sun god Ra and the pharaohs who were considered his earthly representatives. It wasn't just a place of death and burial, though. The complex also served as a center of economic activity, with workshops, granaries, and administrative buildings bustling with people going about their daily lives. The discovery of human remains outside the pyramid indicates that it was revered as a sacred site for centuries after Khufu's death attracting pilgrims and worshippers from all over Egypt. As time went on, the religious landscape of Egypt changed and the worship of the pharaohs as divine beings fell out of favor. The ancient Egyptians' beliefs in the afterlife, however, endured for centuries, influencing later cultures and religions. Their ideas about the journey of the soul after death and the importance of preserving the body for an afterlife had a profound impact on subsequent civilizations. While the Great Pyramid still stands as a testament to the ingenuity of the ancient Egyptians, the other two pyramids at the Giza Plateau have suffered a more brutal fate. The Pyramid of Kafir, the second largest, stripped of its limestone casing and the top two-thirds of its structure, leaving it in its current state of disrepair. Meanwhile, the Pyramid of Menkaur, the smallest of the three, has fared even worse. With only a small portion of its original form remaining, this raises questions about what ultimately led to their downfall and whether the same fate might have been in store for the Great Pyramid if it were in for its discovery in the 14th century. When the Great Pyramid was rediscovered by Western scholars in the 18th century, it captivated their imaginations and inspired a wave of Egyptomania across Europe. Artists, writers, and scientists alike were mesmerized by the monument and sought to capture its grandeur and mystery in their work. Today, the Great Pyramid continues to captivate visitors from around the world, who come to marvel at its magnificence and learn about ancient Egyptian culture. As one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, it remains a symbol of human ingenuity and a reminder of the rich history that surrounds us. Yet despite all that we have learned about the Great Pyramid, there is still much that remains unknown. Recent research using advanced technology has revealed new insights into its construction and purpose. But many questions still linger. Researchers continue to investigate the pyramid's alignment with astronomical events. The purpose of the queen's chamber and the methods used to transport and lift the massive stones into place. And what do you think? What are your thoughts on the incredible construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza? Do you have any theories about the purpose of the Queen S chamber or the methods used to move the massive stones? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe for more exciting episodes. Thanks for joining us on this journey through time. Until next time, keep exploring the wonders of our ancient world.